So why Python? Right. We have been talking about Python. Python is a great language for beginners and like I told you, since it's easy to learn and easy to maintain. I mean, a Python statement is as simple as, uh, you know, print hello world instead of writing uh, four lines of code uh, with all syntax, etc. It, it does not require anything. It's very simple to learn. I mean, uh, I would say that uh, to start programming, you would need only two days to, to be able to write a program in, in Python. It's that easy. But uh, that's not all. Right, you know. it's, it's extremely vast. If you, if you go into its um, packages, if you go into its machine learning packages, scipy packages, not matplotlib, and so on and so forth, it might take years and years for you to master that. But to, but to start with, you, know, you would not take more than, more than two days. Trust me on that. Uh, and Python biggest strength is the bulk of library is portable app. Now there are thousands and thousands and millions and millions of people, uh, people are around the world working in Python. Okay, there are there are hundreds and thousands of contributors throughout. So everyone and it's an open source, right? It's free, right? Even you can you can take Python, you can write your own piece of package and then uh, you know s submit it uh, to the org and uh, they will see whether uh, you know, it's it's good enough. If it's good enough, they'll, they'll include your package as well. So there are there are hundreds and thousands of packages available. You know, which which are portable. Uh, that help. That really helps you in in programming some of the stuff which I'm going to explain later. Just just have a look at uh, this place here, right? Okay, this is PyCharm. I'm not going to talk much about this. This is just like a, a development environment here. It's 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 a GUI based. Development environment PyCharm, which connects to Python. Now, these are all the packages. Okay. Now, instead of uh, let's say, for example, you know, what is this OEUTH2? Now, uh, everyone would have their account in Twitter, right? You all do. Let's say uh, you want to analyze Twitter data. How do you do that? Right. Uh, it's it's very interesting. And let's say you want to analyze uh, Facebook data. How do you do that? Uh, you want to pull this, uh, those streaming data from Twitter, uh, fetch it into your system, do a sentiment analysis, or run some kind of machine learning algorithm on it. How do you do that? So there are packages already available. People have worked very hard in order to create these packages. All you have to do is read a little bit of, a little bit of documentation about this package and start implementing it. Instead of write, writing uh, maybe thousands of lines of code. Even in Python, you end up writing just uh, uh, you know uh, 50 to 60 lines of code. That's it. I mean, some of the machine learning algorithms here. Uh, you know, if if you know machine learning algorithms, I mean, uh, those are algorithms which are mostly used to uh, write artificial intelligence in machine, create artificial intelligence in machine, etc. The those uh, algorithms are also already available in in Scikit-Learn. You see this package. And it has been optimized in a way that uh, you know you can write your machine learning code just in uh, I mean four to five lines of uh, code here, right? You can use this package, invoke those procedures there or functions there, you know, pass your data, fit your model, and then and then predict the outcome. It's as easy as that. I mean, some of these things might be going over your head right now, but uh, I'm just you know I just want to say that. Python is extremely easy. It has made a lot of things easier, and it's still you know, being contributed by thousands and thousands of developers throughout the world. So it's going to get much better, and that's why it's it's becoming famous. Okay, moving on here. So with with libraries like PyDoop and SciPy, right? It's a dream come true for big data analytics. Now, uh, mo mostly at this era, right, where where you have tons and tons of data, the data is flowing from everywhere. You know, people would first think of analyzing those data, and then you want those data to be analyzed, right? I mean, you you want your data from data, even in database, right? You would have like uh, uh, for some organizations they have data for the past 70 years, or for some organization they might have data for 30, 40 years, and that too is huge. I mean, they would have stored it in some database somewhere, and it might be lost. Let's say 1970s data. Who cares about 1970 data, right? At at this age, I was talking about data from uh, you know past. Okay. 
as, as talking about data from past, I mean, who cares about data from 1970, right? But uh, in order to find a trend, right, those data are important. You know, it's, it's not just important, it's necessary to find a trend. Let's say, uh, you know, I, I'm a computer manufacturing company, you know, I want to find a trend as to what's happening. So what people, and you might have heard about forecasting, etc., right? Uh, how do people do forecasting, etc.? So basically what they do is they take uh, past two, three years data, and then uh, you say uh, last year March, uh, I, the sales was one million, April it was uh, uh, two million, March uh, three million, so on and so forth, right? They just take this data and then they extrapolate it to this year, and then they say that in uh, last year August it was one million, so this year August it might be one million. That's how they extrapolate. I mean, there is little more to this algorithm, but I'm just giving a simple example. So, but then look at the amount of data they have taken. Maybe a couple of years they average out, couple of years you know they they do a moving average or or they they use some kind of statistics al algorithm there. But with limited amount of data, with the advent of Hadoop and, and big data, uh, you know, this thing has changed. We can now process whole uh, 30 years of data and, and find a pattern. It's, uh, the pattern might be anything, right? It can be sinusoidal wave to cosine wave to, uh, you know, some graph which, has, uh, which is not any kind of wave. I mean, which is zigzag graph, right? Even that would tell you a pattern. Now, uh, in order to implement those algorithms with so much of data, you have libraries like PyDoop and SciPy. You know, with these libraries, uh, it's it's of course a dream come true for uh, big data and analytics data scientists or analysts whoever it is. Now, growing interest in Python, uh, it started. Uh, you know, this has been Python has been here. Uh, you know, for the last 30, 40 years, but the growing interest. Uh, started in July 2010. Okay, let me give you a brief background of, uh, you know, how Python is n not the name of uh, Snake, you know, it's it's not Python, Python. It is, uh, it's, uh, it started with uh, a name of a play in, in I think, uh, UK, London, somewhere, you know, it started with that name of a play and, uh, and, and then in where it went on. So, the Python has al always been there, but it's just that in July 2010, uh, you know, the interest started spiking off, you know, sp spiking a little bit, and then, and then as of today, it, it has spiked really well. You see here, it's it's spiking, and it's it will continue to spike. Okay, most uh, most organization that you go, you know, today. They ask for uh, you know if it is a data analytics organization, okay. If, if they are dealing with a lot of data, they they tend to ask for Python experience. And even if you don't know Python, and if you are hired for something else, you might be asked to work in 